On my quest of not letting go of this 14-year-old computer, featured in various recent videos, we're now exploring Linux distributions. I decided to try the brand new Mint. Mint 21.2, codenamed Victoria, is based on Ubuntu 22.04. Since this computer could handle Windows 11 just fine after bypassing the requirements, I installed the most popular version of Mint with Cinnamon, instead of the lighter XFCE or Mate versions. But here's the secret. Unless you use Mac OS, it's tough to get brightness adjustment working on this 2009 Mac with NVIDIA GeForce 9400M, even with Linux. You'd think being an open source OS it would be easier to tweak than Windows, and it is, but there must be some hardware complication. And to add insult to injury, the newer kernels drop support for this older NVIDIA graphics like this one. But luckily there is a custom repository where these older drivers can be installed. Turns out the solution is just like the one shown in my Windows 11 video. You have to install the OS in legacy mode from a DVD. On a Mac you can't install an OS in legacy mode from a USB flash drive. You have to use the internal optical drive or a USB optical drive. So you have to burn the ISO file to a DVD-R or RW. But to make up for it, once it's booted up in legacy mode, brightness control works right away, even with the open source Nouveau drivers. But I set up the proprietary NVIDIA drivers anyway, to have full video acceleration. It's not like I was going to edit Novo source code. You definitely want to take full advantage of an older computer's power. With that said, you don't want it to heat up too much. How do you set up fan control on a Mac with Linux? It's a bit more complicated than Mac OS and Windows. You have to use the terminal. And yes, you do need the terminal when setting up things in Linux. The MBP fan package is available from the official Ubuntu software repository, but I found the version compiled from source works better. It's really small, so it compiles very quickly, it's just a few extra steps. And here's how you set it up. First, you download the MBP fan source code. Despite its name, it works on any Intel Mac. You extract it wherever you want, then open terminal and go to the folder you extracted it to, and run these commands. The first one installs the essential programs needed to compile this. Then you compile it with make. Then you install it with make install. Then you copy the service file. And you reload to daemon to get the service to be recognized. But it's not active yet. We have to set it up by editing this file and setting appropriate temperatures. For example, on mine I set the lower temperature to 40, the high one to 50 when it starts speeding up, and the maximum temperature when the fan is at maximum speed to 80 degrees Celsius. And last but not least, run the command to start the service. By the time you do that, the CPU is probably already hot, so the fan will start running really fast, but then it will slow down when it's under the maximum temperature you set. I've been working on this video this month, August 2023, and just like I've been daily driving Windows 11 on this computer, I've been using Mint on this computer daily for a while. Once again, it's proof that you don't need the latest hardware to run a new OS. This part reminds me of when I tried Ubuntu on this Mac for the first time in early 2010. I also installed it in legacy mode, and it automatically set up Grub like this. It adds the option for Mac OS, but it doesn't work. Just gets stuck at this screen because macOS is installed in EFI mode. This is the Windows 11 installation I still have. I don't know why it gave it the name Windows Recovery Environment. That installation still works, but of course we're here to look at Linux. So let's start up Mint Victoria. The fan is already running at a higher speed. I added the temperature indicator here with one of the cinnamon widgets or applets, whatever they're called, CPU temperature indicator. I also set up redshift to make colors warmer at night and I added some widgets on a desktop. They're actually called desklets on cinnamon and a log chronometer and four system monitor graphs. 
took a while to set them up, but now they look okay. Let's see Neofetch too. And the Cinnamon System Info. And here are the NVIDIA settings, showing that the legacy drivers are working here. Of course, I can change the brightness. I changed the icons to Yaru, which is the Ubuntu theme, because I don't like how icons for certain applications like Firefox are completely different on the default Mint icon theme. I also set up automatic updates to see if they work, and they do. You can go to Edit, Preferences, Automation, and turn these options on. And it doesn't apply them immediately, it will apply them at an appropriate time, and so far it hasn't interrupted me with anything. It did update Firefox once while I was using it, and it just came up with a page saying you need to restart Firefox because it updated without closing the pages I already had open, so that wasn't very intrusive. And right now the disk usage is at 100% because it's creating a system snapshot. That's kind of like Windows System Restore, but a bit more thorough. And yeah, for, a, for about a month I've been using this as my main setup once again, like Windows 11 on the same computer, and it's been pretty good. It's about the same performance, same speed. Some things are a bit faster, but not a huge difference. Despite all that, today a woman's half as likely to earn over £50,000 a year than a man. And to add insult to injury, that money will most likely have a picture of a man on it. Because most banknotes don't have women on them. Apart from the Queen, who's on all of them. So here's the usual question. Is it worth it? Well, definitely more so than Windows 11. Is it more worth it than Windows 10? If you've got an older computer like this, older macOS versions don't cut it. And you have to choose between Windows 10 and a modern Linux distro like this Mint. Then it doesn't matter what computer you have. It's the usual question, Windows versus Linux. It's up to you. I can't decide for you. But I tried these options and I like both of them. Each of them have their own pros and cons. I guess it could be a different deal when Windows 10 support ends, and Windows 11 only officially works on much newer computers than this. But what will we have to do then? Of course these computers are getting pretty old now, but even then they, w they will still be useful for basic tasks, so either you'll have to stick with an unsupported OS, which is not very safe, or you'll have to explore Linux distributions, but we'll see if the latest Ubuntu or Mint or whatever Linux distro will work on this kind of hardware, or if it drops support for these older computers, just like Windows 11 did now. I guess we'll have to see, but as of right now, we still like making the most out of this hardware. So there we go, thank you for watching.